Hey, welcome. My name is Fabien Ferraro and today we are going to see what is inside this small tracker. So this talk will be uh, about miniature antenna design for uh, the LoRa Edge Tracker reference design uh, and we'll see the challenges and first experiments. And this is a joint collaboration between Université Côte d'Azur and Semtech. Here is the outline of the presentation. We start with the different tracking solution and why we need multi-standard. Uh, then we'll see what is the impact on the antenna design and how small we can go. Uh, then we'll see how uh, the antenna were designed for this uh, small terminal, so the Aurora Edge Tracker Reference Design. Uh, we'll see how uh, we can solve the challenge measurement for such a small uh, terminal. Um, then we see the impact of uh, the environment on the antenna performance. And finally, we will see some first results on the positioning accuracy. So tracking solution. Uh, depending on the scenario, different technologies may be needed. For example, when you are outdoor, GNSS, LoRa different term of arrival and Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi are perfect uh, to get your position, but uh, since you are in indoor, uh, of course the GNSS is not going to work anymore. So then you can rely on the Wi-Fi. Probably you can use also BLE Beacon Ultra Wideband and also Altimeter to get your uh, elevation. Um, so uh, I really think that uh, the combination of uh, MCU with uh, uh, Bluetooth Low Energy and the uh, LR, LR uh, 11 and 10 uh, solution is uh, the perfect combo to, to get uh, your positioning in any type of situation. Uh, so with such type of uh, um, approach, you will get your GNSS uh, with uh, possibility to get uh, uh, positioning from GPS and uh, Beidou. You have a LoRa, a LoRa transceiver, you have also Wi-Fi sniffer, and uh, thanks to the MCU, you have a BLE uh, transceiver, so you can also uh, use uh, install some beacon indoor to help for your, your positioning. So when we talk about antenna, the size of the terminal is very important. Uh, I have been working on several uh, terminals with different dimensions. You have uh, four terminals I've been working on. Um, so you can see uh, here the uh, max gain uh, of the lower antenna that we, we were able to, 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 to achieve uh, at 868 MHz. So of course, when you have uh, eight centimeter uh, device, uh, um, we, we, we can, and you have an antenna on top, uh, we can easily reach uh, a 1dBi uh, gain. Uh, on the lower edge tracker, uh, because of the constraint on the, on the casing and, and miniaturization, the gain is a little bit uh, lower, so minus 0.5dBi. Then a uh, few years ago, I was working on, a, on a, the micro tracker from uh, IBY company, and uh, uh, we get uh, um, a gain of minus 4 dBi for, for the LoRa. And I have been recently working on the Philo tracker. So this is a tracker uh, for um, uh, tracking cats, which has, of course, to be uh, really miniature. Uh, you can see it's uh, the size of the uh, two euro coin. And then, of course, you have to accept the fact that uh, for a so small antenna, the gain decreased to minus 10 dBA. But even with a, a so small uh, uh, gain, we are still able to make communication up to 500 meters. So here is the PCB. So uh, here you can see uh, the LR11 and 10 and uh, the, mi the microcontroller, which is an STM32WB, so including Bluetooth. Uh, of course, all this part is shielded. Uh, you can see here to, to, to reduce harmonics. Uh, you have super capacitor to enable the 22 dBm uh, mode uh, of LoRa. Uh, here you have on top the LoRa antenna all along the, the, the PCBH. Uh, you you have here the 2.4 GHz antenna, which is an inverted F antenna. Uh, you can see that uh, uh, it's really optimized with the available space uh, in this uh, particular position. Uh, and uh, we have two different GNSS uh, antenna. We have a GNSS PCB antenna, which is here. It's also an inverted F antenna. And if you flip uh, the PCB, you will see that you have a, a GNSS patch antenna on the other side. So here is a, a simulated reflection coefficient of the three different antennas. So what you 
can see is that first, of course, the, the free antenna are matched at the, the dedicated bands. Uh, and also, we take care uh, to, get, to keep a good isolation uh, between the antenna uh, to be sure that we have no uh, coupling and, and, and some uh, potentially some, some uh, losses uh, due to the, the coupling between the antenna. I read the simulated uh, radiation pattern of the LoRa antenna. Uh, so it's a simulation at 915 MHz. We get an efficiency about 50% and a peak gain of o minus uh, 0.5 dBi. So you can see that the radiation is uh, quite omnidirectional. I would say that it's uh, very close to an isotropic radiation pattern because you can see that there is just a very small difference between the peak, which is minus uh, 0.5, and uh, for example, the green part is just minus 3 dB. Now we have the simulation of the GNSS antenna, so GPS and Beidou. Um, so at uh, 1.575 uh, uh, MHz, you have an efficiency of uh, 80% and a ping gain of uh, 1.4 dBi. And uh, if we look at the um, radiation pattern, same thing, we have uh, a very omnidirectional uh, radiation pattern. And finally, the Wi-Fi BLE antenna uh, at uh, 2.4 uh, gigahertz, uh, we get an efficiency of 70%, a peak gain of uh, 1.4 dBi, and the pattern is, is, is very similar to the previous antenna, still looking like a very uh, omnidirectional pattern. Okay, now let's talk about the measurement challenge. Uh, of course, designing antenna is one thing, then, uh, after that, you need to uh, measure your antenna to assess the performance you are expecting. Um, for LoRa and Wi-Fi, it's not too much uh, complicated uh, because it, um, it is a technology with uh, transmitter. So you can use the TX continuous mode uh, at uh, 868 or 915 uh, or at uh, the 2.4 gigahertz. And uh, by transmitting a continuous wave mode, uh, you can use a spectrum analyzer to uh, measure the total uh, radiation pattern, as you can see, for example, here at 915 MHz. So now, when you need to measure uh, standards which is only receiving, like uh, the GNSS receiver, uh, so it's no more possible to have a, a continuous uh, transmit mode. Uh, then the classical method I was using uh, before was to use a GNSS emulator. Um, so in an echoic chamber, we use a reference GPS board. Um, and on this uh, uh, reference board, we can extract the carrier to noise density uh, for a given uh, transmitting power from the GNSS emulator. Um, and after this calibration, you can just put your, 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 your system and uh, estimate uh, the gain of your uh, GNSS antenna. So LR11 and 10 offer a quite a nice uh, new feature. Uh, so it's possible uh, with this chip to, uh, if you send a continuous wave signal at uh, the frequency of the GNSS, uh, by using uh, the receiver, you can extract a RSSI. So you no more need uh, the GNSS uh, uh, emulator. You, just, you can just use a classical RF synthesizer. Uh, and same thing. So uh, my advice is to use, you have the nice kit uh, with uh, SMA connector, uh, which, you, which you can use for the calibration. So of course you calibrate the uh, value of RSSI you are measuring and you need standard on to make your, your, your calibration. Then you will just need to replace uh, the reference antenna by your uh, device. Uh, and of course, uh, think that it's very important not to connect any cable to the uh, terminal because you will uh, change the radiation pattern of the antenna. So what you can use is all the Bluetooth or the LoRa connectivity to transmit uh, the RSSI value of uh, the measurement uh, on, on the, the GNSS antenna. Okay, now we can have a look at the effect of environment. Um, I saw many applications where, in fact, people need to, to place uh, the tracker uh, very close to a metallic plate, 
uh, I mean the elixir face. Um, so here I show you a measurement where uh, I am using a quite large uh, metal plate and I just uh, put the tracker on it. Um, so you see that it changed a lot the radiation pattern. Of course, there is no more radiation in the bottom direction. Uh, and the most important uh, information is that the peak gain uh, decreased by uh, 6 dB uh, compared to the free space measurement, which is really huge. So my recommendation, if you are in this type of use of scenario or use case, uh, try just to uh, add some distance uh, between the, the antenna and the, and the metal plate. Uh, for example, you can use just a, a small foam spacer. So here is the same measurement with a, a four centimeter uh, foam spacer. And then you can see that compared to the uh, free space, now we are gaining uh, uh, plus 2.5 uh, dB. Uh, so of course, I mean, we, we, we can't radiate uh, in, in the bottom direction, but at least the wave is reflected and uh, we still uh, get uh, uh, a good efficiency on the antenna. Here is the measurement of the tracker with a human hand phantom. So when the tracker is on held, um, so I think that is show you the effect of the human body. So it's very similar to what you would have, for example, if you attach the tracker to a belt. Um, so what you can see is that the pattern uh, change a lot. Uh, of course, we get uh, less radiation in the bottom direction. We get also slight reflection from the, from the hand. So at the end, we get a, a small increase in the peak gain of 1.6 dB. But think that uh, whatever the human body is decreasing the overall efficiency of the antenna. And here we, we see that the efficiency is decreased by 1.5 dB. But I mean, it's still acceptable. So I'm now, now going to show you some uh, uh, field test uh, of the GNSS uh, receiver and solver. Uh, so this is results provided by Semtech. Uh, so as you can see on this uh, uh, mast, uh, Semtech attached different uh, trackers uh, with different orientation. Uh, so the test was uh, uh, during uh, two days. Uh, so they capture every five minutes. So it's a very, uh, we get a lot of data to analyze. Uh, so things that we are looking at cold start. Uh, so we just have 600 millisecond scan uh, on GPS and Beidou. Uh, so in fact, the total scan uh, duration is about five seconds uh, with an average power consumption of six milliamp. Um, and we are testing it for the two uh, uh, PCB and uh, patch antenna. So think that if you compare the power consumption with a classical uh, GPS receiver, uh, you are divided the overall power consumption by a ratio of 30, 3 zero. So it's, it's really huge in terms of power saving. I read the result uh, from the test. So we start with the patch antenna. This is cumulative distributive function. You have uh, all the different orientation. So north, west, east, south, and also uh, antenna pointing uh, to the sky or to the ground. Uh, so this is a patch antenna. So I think that the main radiation pattern of the patch antenna is uh, in this direction. So of course, when it's pointing to the sky, uh, the patch antenna gets the, the, the best accuracy. So to read the cumulative distributive function, you we are looking at, for example, for 50% of the point, we will have an accuracy uh, better than seven meter. If we look at 80% uh, of the point, we have an accuracy better than 11.4 11, 11 meter. Now, if we look at the PCB antenna, uh, then think that the PCB antenna has a more omnidirectional pattern. So, of course, we are expecting that uh, the orientation has a uh, smaller influence on the accuracy, and this is exactly what we get. Uh, you can see that whatever the direction, we get an accuracy about uh, 10 meters. So to summarize the result, uh, if your device is static and can point toward the sky, then the patch is probably the best solution. If your device is moving and you don't know the orientation, it's probably better to use a PCB antenna. 
So to conclude this uh, presentation, uh, we saw that uh, uh, the, this uh, terminal, so LoRa Edge Tracker Reference Design, combine multiple geolocation technology uh, with antenna design expertise to deliver a compact and powerful tracker solution to the market. Uh, so uh, we saw that it's possible to get miniature and efficient antenna in a, in a very small form factor like this one. Um, so we also uh, uh, show that the GNSS ceramic patch antenna offers the best positioning accuracy if you are uh, in the static position and are oriented toward the sky. Uh, when you have a random orientation, then this is a PCB antenna with uh, omnidirectional pattern which uh, will give the, the, the better result. Um, so the PCB antenna design of uh, on the LoRa H tracker uh, reference design is optimized for the constraint of a uh, tracker's small form factor while showcasing the, the best capability for the GNSS on the LR uh, LR11 and 10, so you can test both the patch and uh, the PCB uh, antenna. And think also uh, important information is that uh, this tracker is offered with the FCC certified blueprint, so it can help you to reduce the design complexity and development cost uh, or geared toward accelerating the time of market uh, for, for in, in your project. This presentation and feel free to ask any question.